Hello, Wuzzer here, back with another video. And today we're going over a 1 to 99 slash 120 fishing guide. So strap in. As with all my guides, let's start with the useful item. I'm gonna try to keep this a little bit brief as there are a lot of items to run through as it's a gathering skill, so there's just so many things they've added on. First off, we have the skilling outfits. There is the regular fishing outfit, which provides 1% XP per piece, plus 1% more XP when wearing the full set. On top of that, there is the elite skilling outfit, which gives you a 5% increased success rate when fishing and the ability to destroy fish when caught. This is very nice as it helps you to be able to AFK even even more than you already can with fishing. If you upgrade it to the Fury Shark outfit, the increased success rate goes to 7%, and there is an extra bonus where you have a 10% chance to catch a second fish, which gives you two times experience. On top of that, if you own the fishing outfit, the XP boost will translate over to the shark outfit. You start to get shark outfit fragments when you hit 70 fishing, and once you hit 80, you're able to craft pieces of the outfit. This slide has some items which increase your ability to catch fish. First of all, we have the Call of the Sea Aura, which gives you anywhere from 3 to 15% increased chance depending on the tier. This is one of the better skilling auras to prioritize as the skill is so slow, so you'll get more activations out of it. For summoning familiars, the best is Granite Lobster as the plus four invisible fishing boost helps you catch more fish than the Water Fiend does and you get more XP out of it. Also make sure to use Perfect Juju potions as they are tradable and give a 5% increase for one hour. Each dose costs about 25k each, but that's still very worth it. Fishing urns are very, very powerful and should be used while training the skill at all times. Use the highest tier urn you can as the GP per XP is the best on the decorated. And if you don't have the crafting level to add the rune to the urn, it can be assisted by a friend. So if you have a friend that can get you right to decorated from the start, go ahead and use them. In my opinion, skill chompas are no longer worth it. They are up to 700 GP per use for the cheapest one, and even on a high XP fish like Rocktail, they're only going to give you about 30 XP per use, so you're looking at well over 20 GP per XP. If they ever drop down to pre-archaeology numbers, they might be worth looking into again. The aquarium is a room in the player-owned house which requires 63 construction. You can get a 2% XP boost fishing at certain locations if you have the right decoration in the aquarium. For Shiloh Village, you need a Tribal Mask. For Barbarian Village, you need a Fremnic Longboat. And for the Living Rock Caverns, you need a Virago decoration. So if you're fishing in any of those locations, make sure you pick up that decoration to get the extra XP. On top of that, you can use your first prawn point to unlock baitless fishing, meaning you no longer need to buy feathers or bait to fish. Crystallize is an interesting spell, but I think it's just too expensive to use anymore. With the cost of soul and chaos runes, you're looking at 17k per cast, and you use 120 casts per hour as each crystallized spell lasts 30 seconds, so that's over 2 mil GP per hour just on runes. The benefit is that you gain 87.5% more XP and that you can AFK 30 seconds at a time, so you yourself have to weigh the pro-con. Dwarven fish extractors are a very nice but hard item to get. They have two modes, XP mode and resource mode. Seeing as we already want to destroy the fish with the shark outfit, XP mode is a powerful way to boost your experience. And the two times experience from there stacks with all your other boosts, like even bonus experience and wise and torso six. So it's very, very powerful. The end game quest, notably named Sliske's end game, has some nice rewards. And two of them that come to mind are the Ring of Whispers and the Necklace of Shadows. The Ring of Whispers gives a plus three invisible fishing bonus, which increases catch rate, kind of like the Granite Lobster does, while the Necklace of Shadow is a quality of life item as it means that you can summon multiple Granite Lobsters in a row without having to refresh your summoning points with something like a Super Restore. However, there is a much better necklace, and it's the Grace of the Elves necklace. It has three powerful effects, but the nicest one is the AFK associated with having the Porter Charges automatically send fish to the bank. However, with the large cost of porters, again caused by archaeology, I would only use this while swarm fishing for profit, as otherwise you're going to be spending a lot of GP just to AFK a little bit more. Invention is probably the most important thing to look at for a gathering skills, and one of the reasons why I think rushing invention on any account is very useful. The tool perk buffs really add up. The Rodomatic is a basic fishing rod, the only benefit you get is the perks that you have stored into it. However, the Crystal Fishing Rod has an innate 5% increase to success rate, but it has some hefty requirements like unlocking Priftinus. In terms of perks, you're going to want to get as high of a honed rank as you can, and if you have an Ancient Invention, that goes up to 6. 
For the second perk, there is two options and it depends on whether you're going for XP or GP. Go for Furnace 4 if you are mainly dropping Destroying Fish going for XP as it's a 20% XP boost. However, Fortune 3, Imp Soul 2 or 3 is very nice if you are mainly banking fish and trying to fish for GP at Swarm Fishing. Between Hone 6 and Furnace 4, you can see an increase of over 30% in your XP per hour. So yeah, Invention is that good. And last but not least, we have our XP boost slide. The Wise perk gives us 1% more XP per rank. Inspire Effort gives us 2% XP in all gathering skills, which requires 117 archaeology. And Torstil Inset Sticks can be used to increase base XP by a further 2%. Okay, I promise, this is the last thing before we get into the methods. The best way to start pretty much every skill in RuneScape is quests, and fishing is no exception. Doing the Sea Slug, Beneath Cursed Tides, and Fishing Contest quests gets you up to 30 fishing and skips a lot of the pain of the early level. You're going to have to do those quests eventually, might as well do them when the XP matters the most. If you decide to skip doing early quests, then you're going to want to start at Crayfish and do that up until level 20. The XP per hour while fishing is about 11k XP per hour when at that level. They can be found just northeast of the Taverly Lodestone. To drop fish, you can drag the raw crayfish to your action bar and then hold down that key to drop the fish without interrupting your fishing progress. You're going to want to do that with all fish that you want to drop and not bank. Just update the key bind every time you go to a new fishing location. I find that the Z, X, and C keys are the best for dropping as they're just in a convenient location for your hand to rest. At level 20, you're going to move on to fly fishing and the most convenient location is in Lumbridge as it's right by a lodestone. You're going to need feathers for this if you don't have the baitless perk from the aquarium yet. In terms of XP per hour, the best rule of thumb is that it's approximately a thousand times your level. So at level 50, you're getting about 50k XP per hour and at level 30, you're getting about 30k XP per hour. There are three natural stopping points at 52, 58, and 72 fishing. If you leave at 58 fishing, you're going to be going to barbarian fishing as the, at this point you can now catch two of the fish there. The benefit is that you gain agility and strength XP while fishing these fish at an approximate ratio of 10 fishing XP for every fishing and agility XP. You're going to want to have at least 15 agility when you come here as otherwise you don't have the agility level to catch the first fish. If you were to do 58 to 72 fishing here you would, you would gain about 70,000 agility XP skipping all the way from level 15 to level 47 and agility can be a very painful skill to train in the early levels as the courses give very little XP. However if you leave Lumbridge fly fishing at either 52 or 72 you're doing that because you are going to Menaphos to stock up on some fish. There are three fish here, Desert Soul which you unlock at 52 fishing, Catfish at 60 fishing, and Beltfish at 72 fishing. The XP per hour is considerably less than fly fishing up until you unlock Beltfish, so the main reason to do this method is to bank fish for future food as there is a deposit box and bank chest right beside the fishing location. This is very useful for Iron Man and if you're an Iron Man I would go here right at 52. However, if you are not an Iron Man, I would stay at Barbarian Fishing all the way until 72 Fishing. Reaching Tier 8 in the Port Faction will increase your success rate, and if you max out your setup, you can reach up to 150k XP per hour at 85 or higher. Ideally, you would continue on to this location until you are up to 93 for Waterfall Fishing. Waterfall Fishing can be done from 93 all the way up to 99, unlocking better urchins at 95 and 97 respectively. This caps out just over 200k XP per hour when you have access to the top tier urchin, and this is my favorite method to train fishing due to the very heavy AFK. On top of that, there is also the ability to store up the urchins and spend them on fishing lamps. For every large urchin, you're getting an extra 30 XP, so that adds up over time, and you can do a little fun thing where when you get 100 mil fishing, you can turn in all your urchins to get 120 fishing about 5 minutes later. At 94, if you're itching for something that isn't as AFK, Fishing Frenzy is a thing. It's located within the deep sea fishing HUD and what you do is you click on the fish and after a couple XP drops the fish will go away and you need to click on another one very quickly. Rinse repeat until you are at your goal. You gain a multiplier based on how many of you have caught in a row, capping out at a 20% XP boost. So it heavily incentivizes not stopping as a very short break to even like talk to someone can result in your streak going away and it's very frustrating. If there was a way to pause the timer because you have to go to the washroom or you want to get a drink, that would be so much better and it would probably be a more popular training method. At 96 fishing, you can fish Wabagongs, which can be found on Uncharted Islands. 
They're really AFK and really good XP per hour, capping out at about 300k per hour if you have a maximum setup. But the problem is that they are so rare on Uncharted Islands, it has to do with the fact that they spawn in water instead on land, so the generation means they are the least likely one to spawn. And you can't really maintain seeing them like you can do other animals, so it's best to have an island flag that has one or two spawns if you're really lucky, and do it as a daily, as you can catch 100 fish per spawn. There are two other methods that are worth talking about. Crystallized fly fishing is a thing, but it's very expensive and not worth the extra XP as you can just get away with AFKing in Metaphos and not spending 2 mil per hour on runes. But if you really want to maximize your fishing XP, you can head back to Lumbridge and cast Crystallize on the fishing location. It will stay active for 30 seconds, and if you have the Lightform Prayer on, you gain 1.875 times XP over regular catching, so a 100 XP drop becomes 187.5 XP drop, but you don't get any fish. Swarm fishing is unlocked as soon as you get to the deep sea fishing hub, which requires 68 fishing, but you're not suggested to do it until a higher level like 85, as you will otherwise get low level fish and not make a lot of GP, which is the main reason to do swarm fishing. At 99 with the max setup, you can anticipate 110 to 120,000 XP per hour and about 1.5 mil GP per hour in profit. For 99 to 120, there are four main options, Wobbegong, Waterfall, Swarm Fishing, or Fish Fancy. I'm partial to Waterfall Fishing due to the XP per hour, it being very inattentive and how mobile friendly it is. And also, I'm not a big fan of daily, so something like Wobbegong has never really appealed to me. At the same time, I had mining as my Uncharted Island flag. In terms of non-conventional methods, we have three here. Daily Divine Rocktail Bubbles, which can get you about 70k XP per day, as you can catch up to 125 fish. Uh, just go to World 2 at Reset, and there should be a plenty of Divine Rocktail Bubbles for you to loot from. The Monthly Oyster is 200k XP per month. Once you get to level 98 or higher, you get 30 XP drop, so you can just see whatever you get as an XP drop. If you get a 2k XP drop, that means you're getting 60k XP that month. Um, so just go ahead and do that every month. Not only do you get a free clue score reward, but you also get a lot of experience in both fishing and farming. And finally, we have fishing brawlers, which uh, I covered this in a recent video, which I'll leave a link in the description where you can get a more in-depth guide. But basically what you do is you drop divine rock tail bubbles at Mage Bank and have dwarven fish extractors and you gain like 3,800 per XP drop, which is just insane. So that's it. That's the guide. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions down below or any uh, methods, selections, that sort of stuff, leave a comment down below. Uh, if you like the content I'm creating, consider subscribing or dropping a like on the video. It really helps me out. And past that, have a good day and I'll catch you in the next one.